All right, hello everybody. We are going to be working on topic two, lesson one. And our essential question for today is, what are integers and how are they used to represent real world quantities? So that first question here is, what are integers? Well, we can see here the counting numbers, their opposites and zero are integers. So counting numbers, one, two, three, four, five, their opposites, which we'll get into, and zero are all integers. Numbers that are located on the opposite sides of zero and are the same distance from zero on a number line are opposites. So we can think of um, six and negative six as being opposites. So you can see they're both the same distance from zero, so they would be considered opposites. Everything to the right of zero are positive integers. Everything left of zero are negative integers. So anything on the negative side we don't want to call it minus 6 because minus is an operation. That's what we're doing. It's like subtraction. What we want to call it is negative 6. So it's not minus 6. It's negative 6. And then we can just call this 6 or positive 6. Okay, 0 doesn't have a negative or positive. It's just 0. Further. All right, example 2. So we're going to compare and order integers. Um, in this problem, it says Riley recorded the temperatures for five days in January. And we can see that these are the five days in January. Um, it wants to know which day was the coldest day of Riley's data, which was the warmest day. Write the temperatures from least to greatest. So while it doesn't tell us exactly that we need to be using a number line, a number line is a wonderful thing to show um, the order of numbers. So that's what I'm going to do here. So let me grab a line. Okay. And then we know that we can put a zero here for our number line to show the right being positive numbers. <coughs> Sorry, I got to tickle my throat there. And to the left, negative numbers. So I'm going to start off just by looking for all the positive numbers. So I'm going to just go up to well, if I can see here, I have nothing greater than positive 5. So I'm just going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we'll do the same thing for negative. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, 4, and 5. Okay, so I'm going to look for all the positive numbers. So I can see I have a positive 1 and a positive 4. So I'm going to go ahead and find positive 1. Let me get a different color here so we can see it a little bit better. Hopefully you can see this. Here's positive 1. That's the same as Friday. Okay, that's probably not the best color. <laughs> Let's do this. Friday. And that's on positive 1. Then we're going to look at the next one, which is 4, positive 4. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4. We'll put a point there. That's Wednesday. Okay, that's four, and this is one. And then now let's do the negative temperatures. We have three, two, and five. So let's do negative two, negative one, negative two, right here. And we know that that's Tuesday. Negative two. Negative three is the next one we're going to do. That's Thursday. And then Monday is negative five. Sorry, there's a helicopter outside my window. <laughs> okay, so now we can get down to business and find out, now that we have all of these ordered, we can find out which was the coldest day and which is the warmest. So typically when we're on a temperature, we normally would like to do this um, as a vertical number line, um, but we know that when we're going left of zero, we're getting into smaller numbers or colder values when we're talking about temperature. When we're going right on temperature, it means we're getting warmer or up, we're going warmer, lower, going down, okay? So my coldest day, what would be the farthest point on our number line going to the left? We know it's negative five, which is Monday. 
And then our warmest day is all the way over from the furthest part from zero, which is Wednesday at four degrees. A positive four degrees, right? Yay! There's our answer. So having a number line really helps us to see which is the furthest, um, which is the warmest, you know, which is the furthest this way and which is the furthest this way. It can help us interpret data a lot faster when we have a model to look at. Oop, when All right, example number three, integers describe many real world situations, including altitude, elevation, depth, temperature, and electrical charges. Zero represents a specific value in each of these situations. Which integer represents sea level, the airplane, or the whale? So when we're thinking about an airplane flying in the sky, it's at 10,000 feet, right? It's really high up in the air. What are we talking about in, in these terms? Well, we can talk about altitude because a plane gets up there in altitude. We can also talk about elevation um, for an airplane. And then when we're thinking about the whale, how is it being described how far down it is? We know we're talking about depth. Okay, so how far down something is. Um, so zero in this case, not how far down something is or how high something is, what would zero represent here? And in this case, we would think of it as um, sea level, right? Sea level is where the sea reaches the land. That's at zero. Anything below it is going to be below sea level. Anything above it is going to be above sea level. So zero in this case is sea level. And then finally, we're just going to do some examples here. I'm going to make my marker a little bit bigger. Our first one says to find the opposite. So really, when we think about it, it's just the opposite um, sign. But I want you to try and think of a picture in your brain when you are thinking of opposite. Here's 98. It has this much distance from 0. So I need to find its opposite, which would be negative 98. They would have the same distance from 0. So I know that my answer here would be negative 98. Same thing is true with 100. We have our distance from 0, which is 100. Our distance from 0 this way would also be 100, but it's negative 100. So here again, negative 100. And then finally, negative 33. So remember, anything going to the left is going to be negative. So I have negative 33 here. Its distance from zero is going to match the opposite distance from zero, which is positive 33. Okay. And then finally, we are going to write the integers in order from least to greatest. So that's also very important, is we want to see least to greatest. So the number that's furthest to the left to the number that's furthest to the right on the number line. Um, use a number line to show your thinking or your order. So again, I'll just draw myself a, a nice little line there with zero right in the middle. And then I'll order my numbers. So here I have zero. I'm going to go up one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And I see that I have a zero. And then I have a negative three. So one, two, three, here's negative three. And the important thing here is not only to plot the number, but to say what the number is at that point. Okay, and then I have a negative four, which is one over, it's negative four. And then I have a positive two. Oops, let's put the red, keep it consistent here, positive two. So now that I've ordered my numbers on a number line, I can now just write them from least to greatest. So now I can actually physically see which is least all the way to greatest. Okay, so we'll do negative four, negative three, zero. Zero doesn't have either a negative or a positive, and then positive two. Okay, so what I want you to think about for this lesson is not just putting a sign or taking away a sign, but to be thinking about this picture in your brain. 
what is the distance from zero on both sides? That's going to be its opposite. And then also, when I'm looking for ordering numbers, putting it on a number line really helps to show me which is least and which is great or which is great to least. So always consider using a model when trying to show your thinking. All right, you guys, I'll see you in class. Hopefully this was helpful and we'll just have a lot of time in class to practice and work on these problems. Thanks and I hope you guys have a great day.